everybody, it's Christy back with another video and I have been wanting to do this video for a while. I don't know if anybody will be interested in this or not, but I thought that you might be. So I have been working on compiling what I'm calling my artist match, like mishmash mashup palette for a while. I have been um, like a little bit afraid to get this going just because I didn't want to pour things and then like regret it. So this has been, I've had this palette sitting around for a while to do this with. Um, so the palette itself is from Arts to Embers on Etsy. If you've been around the channel, you know I've talked about Zach before and um, what his, he's doing with design. I just think he's really doing some cool stuff with his designs and how he is approaching like small compact palettes. So if you're interested in something like that, I will link him below. Not affiliated. I just love his stuff and buy it all the time. So I bought this a while ago. I want you to see how thin it is. So if you take a look here, it does close. I'm just, I, I didn't have it closed. Um, you see how thin it is. It's real thin. Like there's my fingers for comparison. Um, and it is pretty large sized. And I just have some stickers on the outside here. Um, Shout out if you know what this sticker's from. <laughs> um, if you don't, it's a uh, Parks and Rec reference. Um, but that's all I'll say. Uh, and then I have a Scrawler Box sticker on here. I have a Blackwing sticker on here. And I have the sticker from the Sketchbox I was on. And these are my emote stickers from Twitch. Um, and then I have some stickers on the back too. But um, here is the inside of this palette. So it is shallow pans. They are a little bit wider than a half pan, but they're shallow. But I find they fit a good amount of paint, more than a quarter pan, I would say. And um, you have 44 wells in here. So when I got this palette, I did go ahead and I glued down all of the half pans because I don't want them to move around. They will fall out. And he provides um, stickers for you to do that with. I think I actually glued a bunch of them straight in with some super glue. And then these are the colors that are in this palette. So this fits right in here like that. Um, and I just had it sitting below it, but I thought I would go over with you what I have in this palette, what I might add to this palette later on, but, um, I've been painting with it now for a couple weeks and I'm having a blast. Like it is all of my favorite artist grade paints for the most part. I'm going to talk a little bit about what's not in here. Um, and it is just like obviously a convenience palette cause I've got a ton of colors in here, but it's just fun. There's granulating stuff. There's non-granulating stuff. Um, yeah. So the main thing that's not in here that some of my favorite paints are my M. Graham watercolors. M. Graham is notorious because they're made with honey and they will migrate badly. Um, <clears throat> any palette of M. Grahams that I have, I don't travel with. It stays here on my desk, staying flat, um, never getting turned upside down. And I don't have the paints um, on both opposite sides, although this wouldn't be that. Um, but this is meant to be like a plein air, like throw it in my bag and go with it. So I wanted these to be able to do that. I did not put any M. Graham in here, which sucks because I love my M. Graham paints. But um, I've got other brands in here. The three brands I have in here right now are Sennelier, Daniel Smith, and My Mary Blue. Um, a couple of My Mary Blues. I don't have a ton of their paint, but I do like their paint. So let me just go through what colors I did put in here and my, my choices, because I did have more than this, but this is kind of what I thought made sense. And um, I still have room, obviously, to add a few things here and there. I, I haven't decided to add anything yet, but it is a possibility. So we start with Daniel Smith Buff Titanium, which I don't have in another palette. This is the only palette that includes Daniel Smith's Buff Titanium, because it is a really nice neutral that... I view as a very convenience color. And usually if I'm at my desk, I just use uh, some sort of bleed proof white to mix into things. But I've been more interested in it lately, so I definitely put it in the palette. Um, Daniel Smith Hands of Yellow Light, Daniel Smith New Gamboge. Those come in like the main Daniel Smith primary split palette that you can buy. That's like, you know, the beginning palette. I love these colors. Nice, warm and cool yellows. Then we have Daniel Smith Yellow Ochre. It's a favorite. And we have Sennelier's Quinacridone Gold. I just love that color. I think it's a little bit more yellow than the Daniel Smith Yellow Ochre. It fits more in the non-neutral category as like one of the yellows. 
This is almost a neutral to me, but I love them both. So they're both in here. Then I have Daniel Smith, um, Quinacridone Sienna. It is like one of my favorite burnt orange kind of colors. I just love it. Um, it's another one that I believe comes in there like one of their starter kits. I don't remember which one, but I feel like it came in a starter kit. Um, Daniel Smith Cadmium Orange Hue, just uh, your typical straight orange. Daniel Smith Pyral Scarlet, that definitely comes in their uh, primary, split primaries. Sennelier, oh, Sennelier, sorry, uh, Alizarin Crimson. So their Alizarin Crimson is like a brick red kind of color. It's not your typical cool Alizarin Crimson that one might be used to. So I like it. I think it's different. And um, I just think it's a really beautiful earthy color that I, I mean, it's a convenience color. I can make that color, but I really like it. Then over here we have two that are very similar, but I, I do use them differently. This is uh, Sennelier's Rose Matter Lake. It's a little more of a traditional um, just split palette uh, pink. And then we have Daniel Smith's Quinacridone Rose. I love both of them. This one is a little warmer. This one is a little cooler. This one is a little bit more opaque. This one's a little bit more transparent. Um, but they are both really cool, like neat colors that I like having. My Mary Blue Potter's Pink, I've talked about this before. Like, just look how beautifully granulating that is. It's just a really cool color with some really cool properties. Sennelier's Cobalt Violet Light Hue, which is, again, a little more opaque than some of my other colors. And it is a kind of purpley pink that I, I think fits well. I don't have a traditional mauve or mauve in this palette, but I do like that. I do have Daniel Smith's Quinacridone Violet, which is what I use as my, my mauve color in my Daniel Smith palette. And then I have Sennelier's Dioxazine Purple. It is one of my favorite Dioxazine Purples on the market. I absolutely love it. Can't get enough of it. Um, speaking of colors that are my favorites, Daniel Smith's French Ultramarine is the Goat Ultramarine. Um, I find it to be my favorite Ultramarine Blue out there. It granulates like a dream. It makes beautiful fluffy clouds. I can't get enough of using it. I will say Sennelier's uh, ultramarine blue that I have in my Sennelier palette is really nice as well. I just have a half pan of it, but I just, there's something about that Daniel Smith ultramarine. I love it. Um, Daniel Smith phthalo blue green shade. That's a really nice cool blue. And I have Daniel Smith Prussian blue. I know a lot of people aren't big Prussian blue fans these days. It's kind of an old school color, but I love it. It's among my favorites. We have Daniel Smith Cobalt Teal and Sennelier Thalo Turquoise. They are, when you look at their tubes, you think they're going to be kind of similar, but they're very different. And one is much more opaque than the other. This one is very transparent. So I like these as like some teal options. And I love teal. It's one of my favorite colors. Uh, we have Daniel Smith Permanent Green. I like that. It's kind of a nice medium green. Then we have Daniel Smith Thalo Green. This is the blue shade, I believe. I, I wanted both of these to lean towards each other because I like that. This is Daniel Smith Perline Green. It's not a typical color that a lot of people have, but man, it's beautiful dark green and it's a convenience color. I like making evergreens. Perline Green is such a beautiful color for evergreens or to at least be a base for evergreens. And then Sennelier Sap Green is a little bit more um, light. It's less olivey and more green than some other sap greens on the market. So having the perline with it is nice. I haven't completely ruled out getting an olive green or a sap green here that would be a little bit more in between these two colors. That seems completely excessive, but um, I love green and I love painting florals. So maybe not, I don't know. If you have a good color that would go in between these two that you think I should add here that's artist grade, you leave that in the comments below. Uh, Daniel Smith Moon Glow, if you know, you know. Moon Glow is one of my favorites. So beautiful. Granulates into all these different colors. It's so interesting in paintings. And then we have Daniel Smith Payne's Gray. A lot of these are Daniel Smith. Admittedly, I have um, Daniel Smith's in tubes that I use a lot. So a lot of these are Daniel Smith, but then we've got some others in here that I really like. Like this My Merry Blue Dragon's Blood paint. It is similar to a Burnt Sienna, but I just think it's cool. <laughs> um, and I wanted it and I bought it a while back and it's just been sitting waiting to actually be put into a palette where it can be used. Daniel Smith Burnt Umber and Daniel Smith Van Dyke Brown. Uh, classic browns. That's just like a really nice 
little neutral lineup, I think, that um, is augmented by the buff titanium, the yellow ochre, and the quinacridone sienna up here. Like, you could even put those in a, in a row down here, and it would work. Alizarin crimson, this one is even dark enough. It kind of leans towards being a little bit more earthy, so I could mix a really nice, like, oxide red type color easily with those two. And then we have Daniel Smith Lamp Black. I don't use black a ton in my watercolor painting, but it's a convenience color and I do like to have one in my palette. And then I do have Daniel Smith's Pearl White, Interference Silver, and Iridescent Gold here in the corner. I do occasionally like to have watercolors that are metallic. You know I like a little sparkle. And so I just threw them in there because I had the space and I figured it wasn't hurting anything to have it. And then you see up here, we have this like gigantic mixing area that's nice and flat and it really mixes nicely um, right from the get go. It isn't going to bead on you too badly because it's got a resin coating on it. And for whatever reason, that works really, really nicely. So um, that's what I have in this palette. Like I said, this came with it and goes right in here so I can close it up and it is just perfect. Um, I really love this palette and I'm excited to play with it and take it on the road. I do have open spaces in here. I haven't decided if I'm going to fill them right away or if I'm going to let them sit. Another thing I'm thinking about is putting some kind of opaque white medium in here. Um, part of me really wants to find a way to like get some of my Derwent Ink Tense White in here, but it's too like getting an actual half pan of it's going to be too high and it's going to be too raised. So I could chop off a little piece of an Inktense block and just like jam it in there. Um, I think that would work. I haven't tried that yet, but I do think that would work. Um, so I might do that, or I might just use the buff titanium and say we're not going to carry uh, any kind of opaque white for this palette at all. Um, I hope that this was interesting to you. I just feel like Sometimes I get lost in all the palettes that I have or like playing with one and not with another. And I just wanted something that represented all of my artist grade quality stuff that I can just take on the go, paint wherever I am. Uh, we're going to do some traveling soon. And I wanted to be able to take my quality paints that I like the best on the road with me. So I did that and I made this nice little palette here. And like I said, I wanted to give a little shout out to Zach at Arts to Embers because I do think he's doing some really cool stuff over there. And if you are somebody that likes palettes and likes things that are nice and travel compact, you definitely want to check out his store for sure. Have you ever heard of Arts to Embers before? And like I said, what color should I add to this that are missing? Here's the swatch card again. And you tell me what's missing. Let me know in the comments below. And that's going to be it for me today. I hope this inspires you to play with something that you consider precious and actually use it today. And we will see you in the next video. Bye for now.